The Indian independence movement was a series of historic events with the ultimate aim of ending British rule in India. It lasted from 1857 to 1947. The first nationalistic revolutionary movement for Indian independence emerged from Bengal. It later took root in the newly formed Indian National Congress with prominent moderate leaders seeking the right to appear for Indian civil service examinations in British India, as well as more economic rights for natives. The first half of the 20th century saw a more radical approach towards self-rule by the Lal Bal Pal Triumvirate, Aurobindo Ghosh and B.O. Chidambaram Pillai. The final stages of the independence struggle from the 1920s was characterized by Congress's adoption of Mahatma Gandhi's policy of non-violence and civil disobedience. Intellectuals such as Rabindranath Tagore, Subramania Bharati, and Bankam Chandra Chattopadhyay spread patriotic awareness. Female leaders like Sarojini Naidu, Pritilata Wadadar, and Kasturba Gandhi promoted the emancipation of Indian women and their participation in the freedom struggle. Few leaders followed a more violent approach. This became especially popular after the Rowlett Act, which permitted indefinite detention. The act sparked protests across India, especially in the Punjab province, where they were violently suppressed in the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. The Indian independence movement was in constant ideological evolution. Essentially anti-colonial, it was supplemented by visions of independent, economic development with a secular, democratic, republican, and civil libertarian political structure. After the 1930s, the movement took on a strong socialist orientation. It culminated in the Indian Independence Act 1947, which ended crown suzerainty over India and created Pakistan. India remained a crown dominion until 26 January 1950, when the Constitution of India established the Republic of India. Pakistan remained a dominion until 1956 when it adopted its first constitution. In 1971, East Pakistan declared its own independence as Bangladesh. Early British colonialism in India. The first European to reach India was the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama, who reached Calicut in 1498 in search of spice. Two, just over a century later, the Dutch and English established trading outposts on the Indian subcontinent, with the first English trading post set up at Surat in 1613. Three. Over the next two centuries, the British, Note 1, defeated the Portuguese and Dutch but remained in conflict with the French. The decline of the Mughal Empire in the first half of the 18th century allowed the British to establish a foothold in Indian politics. 4. During the Battle of Plassey, the East India Company's army defeated Siraj Ud Dalla, the Nawab of Bengal, and the company established itself as a major player in Indian affairs. After the Battle of Buxar of 1764, it gained administrative rights over Bengal, Bihar and the Midnapur part of Odisha. 5. After the defeat of Tipu Sultan, most of southern India came either under the company's direct rule, or under its indirect political control in a subsidiary alliance. The company subsequently seized control of regions ruled by the Maratha Empire, after defeating them in a series of wars. Much of Punjab was annexed in 1849, after the defeat of Sikh armies in the first, 1845–46, and 2nd, 1848–49, Anglo-Sikh Wars. 6. Robert Clive with Mir Jafar after the Battle of Plassey. Mir Jafar's betrayal towards the Nawab Siraj Ud Dalla of Bengal in Plassey made the battle one of the main factors of British supremacy in the subcontinent. The last effort and fall of Tipu Sultan by Henry Singleton, c. 1800. After the defeat of Tipu Sultan of Mysore, most of South India was now either under the company's direct rule, or under its indirect political control. Early rebellions. His army was defeated and he escaped from the British forces. Chinnamalai engaged in guerrilla warfare and defeated the British in battles at Kaveri in 1801, Odanilai in 1802 and Arachalar in 1804. 33, 34. In 1804 the king of Korda, Kalinga was deprived of his traditional rights to the Jagannath Temple. In retaliation, a group of armed Paiks attacked the British at Pipili. J. E. Rajguru, the chief of army of Kalinga requested a common alliance against the British. 35. After Rajguru's death, Bakshi Jagabandhu launched an armed rebellion against the East India Company's rule in Odisha. This is now known as the Paik Rebellion, the first rebellion against the British East India Company. Polithavar. 
Pazasi Raja, fought the British in a series of continuous struggles for 13 years during the Koshiote War. Balu Nachiyar, was one of the earliest Indian queens to fight against the British colonial power in India. Virapandiya Katabaman, Maviran Alagu Mutukan. Statue of Bakshi Jagabandhu, the leader of Pika Rebellion. Ganga Narayan Singh, leader of Bhumij Rebellion Bursa Munda, leader of Munda Rebellion, Ulgulan. Sidhu and Kanhu Murmu, leaders of Santhal Rebellion. Rebellion of 1857. The Indian Rebellion of 1857 was a large rebellion in the northern and central India against the East India Company. It was suppressed and the British government took control of the company. The conditions of service in the company's army and cantonments increasingly came into conflict with the religious beliefs and prejudices of the sepoys. 39. The predominance of members from the upper castes in the army, perceived loss of caste due to overseas travel, and rumors of secret designs of the government to convert them to Christianity led to growing discontent. 40. The sepoys were also disillusioned by their low salaries and the racial discrimination practiced by British officers in matters of promotion and privileges. 40. The indifference of the British towards native Indian rulers and the annexation of Oud furthered dissent. The Marquess of Dalhousie's policy of annexation, the doctrine of lapse and the projected removal of the Mughals from their ancestral palace at Red Fort also led to popular anger. The final spark was provided by the rumoured use of tallow, from cows, and lard, pig fat, in the newly introduced pattern 1853 Enfield rifle cartridges. Soldiers had to bite the cartridges with their teeth before loading them into their rifles, ingesting the fat. This was sacrimonious to both Hindus and Muslims. 41. Mangal Pandi was sepoy who played a key part in the events immediately preceding the outbreak of the Indian Rebellion of 1857. His defiance to his British superiors and later his execution ignited the fire for 1857 Indian Rebellion. On 10 May 1857, the sepoys at Meerut broke rank and turned on their commanding officers, killing some of them. They reached Delhi on the 11th of May, set the company's toll house on fire, and marched into the Red Fort, where they asked the Mughal Emperor, Bahadur Shah II, to become their leader and reclaim his throne. The emperor eventually agreed and was proclaimed Shihensha e Hindustan by the rebels. 42. The rebels also murdered much of the European, Eurasian, and Christian population of the city. 43. Revolts broke out in other parts of Oud and the northwestern provinces as well, where civil rebellion followed the mutinies, leading to popular uprisings. 44. The British were initially caught off guard and were thus slow to react, but eventually responded with force. The lack of effective organization among the rebels, coupled with the military superiority of the British, brought a rapid end to the rebellion. 45 The British fought the main army of the rebels near Delhi, and after prolonged fighting and a siege, defeated them and reclaimed the city on 20 September 1857. 46 Subsequently, revolts in other centers were also crushed. The last significant battle was fought in Gwalior on 17 June 1858 during which Rani Lakshmibai was killed. Sporadic fighting and guerrilla warfare, led by Tatya Tope, continued until spring 1859, but most of the rebels were eventually subdued. The Indian Rebellion of 1857 was a turning point. While affirming the military and political power of the British, 47, it led to a significant change in how India was to be controlled by them. Under the Government of India Act 1858, the East India Company's territory was transferred to the British government. 48. At the apex of the new system was a cabinet minister, the Secretary of State for India, who was to be formally advised by a statutory council. 49. The Governor-General of India, Viceroy, was made responsible to him, while he in turn was responsible to the government. In a royal proclamation made to the people of India, Queen Victoria promised equal opportunity of public service under British law and also pledged to respect the rights of native princes. 50. The British stopped the policy of seizing land from the princes, decreed religious tolerance and began to admit Indians into the civil service. However, they also increased the number of British soldiers in relation to native Indian ones, and allowed only British soldiers to handle artillery. Bahadur Shah was exiled to Rangoon where he died in 1862. In 1876 the British Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli proclaimed Queen Victoria the Empress of India.
The British liberals objected as the title was foreign to British traditions. Lakshmibai, the Rani of Jhansi, one of the principal leaders of the rebellion who earlier had lost her kingdom as a result of the doctrine of lapse. Attack of the mutineers on the Redon Battery at Lucknow, 30 July 1857. Suppression of the Indian Revolt by the English, which depicts the execution of mutineers by blowing from a gun by the British. The first session of the Indian National Congress in 1885. The Congress was the first modern nationalist movement in the British Empire. Lala Lajpat Rai, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, and Bipin Chandra Pal, popularly known as Lal Bal Pal. The decades following the rebellion were a period of growing political awareness, the manifestation of Indian public opinion and the emergence of Indian leadership at both national and provincial levels. Databai Nauroji formed the East India Association in 1867 and Surendranath Banerjee founded the Indian National Association in 1876. Inspired by a suggestion made by A. O. Hume, a retired Scottish civil servant, 72 Indian delegates met in Bombay in 1885 and founded the Indian National Congress. 52. They were mostly members of the upwardly mobile and successful Western educated provincial elites, engaged in professions such as law, teaching and journalism. At its inception, Congress had no well-defined ideology and commanded few of the resources essential to a political organization. Instead, it functioned more as a debating society that met annually to express its loyalty to the British and passed numerous resolutions on less controversial issues such as civil rights or opportunities in government, especially in the civil service. These resolutions were submitted to the Indian government and occasionally to the British Parliament, but the Congress's early gains were slight. Despite its claim to represent all India, the Congress voiced the interests of urban elites. 52. The number of participants from other social and economic backgrounds remained negligible. 52. However, this period of history is still crucial because it represented the first political mobilization of Indians, coming from all parts of the subcontinent and the first articulation of the idea of India as one nation rather than a collection of independent princely states. 52. Religious groups played a role in reforming Indian society. These were of several religions from Hindu groups such as the Arya Samaj, the Brahmo Samaj, to other religions. The work of men like Swami Vivekananda, Ramakrishna, Sri Aurobindo, V. O. Chidambaram Pillai, Subramanya Bharathi, Bankam Chandra Chatterjee, Rabindranath Tagore and Dadabai Nauroji, as well as women such as the Scots-Irish sister Nivedita, spread the passion for rejuvenation and freedom. The rediscovery of India's indigenous history by several European and Indian scholars also fed into the rise of nationalism among Indians. 52. The triumvirate also is known as Lal Bal Pal, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Bipin Chandra Pal, Lala Lajpat Rai, along with V. O. Chidambaram Pillai, Sri Aurobindo, Surendranath Banerjee, and Rabindranath Tagore were some of the prominent leaders of movements in the early 20th century. The Swadeshi movement was the most successful. The name of Lakmanya began spreading around and people started following him in all parts of the country. The Indian textile industry also played an important role in the freedom struggle of India. The merchandise of the textile industry pioneered the Industrial Revolution in India and soon England was producing cotton cloth in such great quantities that the domestic market was saturated and the products had to be sold in foreign markets. On the other hand, India was rich in cotton production and was in a position to supply British mills with the raw material they required. This was the time when India was under British rule and the East India Company had already established its roots in India. Raw materials were exported to England at very low rates while cotton cloth of refined quality was imported to India and sold at very high prices. This was draining India's economy causing the textile industry of India to suffer greatly. This led to great resentment among cotton cultivators and traders. After Lord Curzon announced the partition of Bengal in 1905, there was massive opposition from the people of Bengal. Initially, the partition plan was opposed through press campaign. The total follower of such techniques led to the boycott of British goods and the people of India pledged to use only Swadeshi or Indian goods and to wear only Indian cloth. Imported garments were viewed with hate. At many places, public burnings of foreign cloth were organized. Shops selling foreign cloths were closed. The cotton textile industry is rightly described as the Swadeshi industry. 
The period witnessed the growth of Swadeshi textile mills. Swadeshi factories came into existence everywhere. According to Surendranath Banerjee, the Swadeshi movement changed the entire texture of Indian social and domestic life. The songs composed by Rabindranath Tagore, Rajani Kanta Sen and Syed Abu Mode became the moving spirit for the nationalists. The movement soon spread to the rest of the country and the partition of Bengal had to be firmly inhaled on 1 April, 1912. Cover of a 1909 issue of the Tamil magazine Vijaya showing, Mother India, Bharat Mata, with her diverse progeny and the rallying cry, Vand Mataram. Ghadar D. Gunj, was Ghadar Party literature produced in the early stages of the movement. A compilation of nationalist literature, it was banned in India in 1913. Also was opposed to separate electorates for Christians, believing that the faithful, should participate as common citizens in one common, national political system. 57, 58. The All India Conference of Indian Christians and the All India Catholic Union formed a working committee with them. Ranasamy of Andhra University serving as President and B. L. Rally Aram of Lahore serving as General Secretary. In its meeting on 16 April 1947 and 17 April 1947, the Joint Committee prepared a 13-point memorandum that was sent to the Constituent Assembly of India, which asked for religious freedom for both organizations and individuals. This came to be reflected in the Constitution of India. 57, 58. The temperance movement in India became aligned with Indian nationalism under the direction of Mahatma Gandhi who saw alcohol as a foreign importation to the culture of the subcontinent. Dadabhai Nauroji, was one of the founding members of the Indian National Congress. Lala Lajpat Rai of Punjab, Bal Gangadhar Tilak of Bombay, and Bipin Chandra Pal of Bengal, the triumvirate were popularly known as Lal Bal Pal, changed the political discourse of the Indian independence movement. 28 January 1865 to 17 November 1928 was an Indian author, freedom fighter, and politician. He played a vital role in the Indian independence movement. He was popularly known as Punjab Kesari. He is also known as Punjab Dasher, which literally means the Lion of Punjab. He was one of the three members of the Lal Bal Pal Trimurti. 1. He was also associated with management activities of Punjab National Bank in early years and Lakshmi Insurance Company in their early stages in 1894. He died of a severe head injury after 18 days of trauma injuries during a baton charge by police in Lahore, when he led a peaceful protest march against the All-British Simon Commission Indian constitutional reforms. Surendranath Banerjee, founded the Indian National Association and founding members of the Indian National Congress. Sir Surendranath Banerjee often known as Rashtraguru Bengali, Rashtraguru. 10 November 1848 to the 6th of August 1925 was Indian nationalist leader during the British rule. He founded a nationalist organization called the Indian National Association to bring Hindus and Muslims together for political action. He was one of the founding members of the Indian National Congress. Surendranath supported Montague Kelmsford reforms, unlike Congress, and with many liberal leaders he left Congress and founded a new organization named Indian National Liberation Federation in 1919. Gopal Krishna Gokhale, was a senior leader of the Indian National Congress and the founder of the Servants of India Society. The Noah Kali riots were a series of semi-organized massacres, rapes and abductions, combined with looting and arson of Hindu properties, perpetrated by the Muslim community in the districts of Noah Kali in the Chittagong division of Bengal now in Bangladesh, in October to November 1946, a year before India's independence from British rule. Kudiram Bose was one of the youngest Indian revolutionaries tried and executed by the British. Prafula Chaki was associated with the Jugantar. He carried out assassinations against British colonial officials in an attempt to secure Indian independence. Bupendranath Datta was an Indian revolutionary who was privy to the Indo-German conspiracy. In July 1905, Lord Curzon, the Viceroy and Governor-General, 1899-1905, ordered the partition of the province of Bengal. The stated aim was to improve administration. 63, however, this was seen as an attempt to quench nationalistic sentiment through divide and rule. The Bengali Hindu intelligentsia exerted considerable influence on local and national politics. The partition outraged Bengalis. Widespread agitation ensued in the streets and in the press, 
and the Congress advocated boycotting British products under the banner of Swadeshi, or indigenous industries. A growing movement emerged, focusing on indigenous Indian industries, finance, and education, which saw the founding of National Council of Education, the birth of Indian financial institutions and banks, as well as an interest in Indian culture and achievements in science and literature. Hindus showed unity by tying Rocky on each other's wrists and observing Arandan, not cooking any food. During this time, Bengali Hindu nationalists like Sri Aurobindo, Bhupendranath Dada, and Bipin Chandra Pal began writing virulent newspaper articles challenging the legitimacy of British rule in India in publications such as Jagantar and Sandhya, and were charged with sedition. The partition also precipitated increasing activity from the then still nascent militant nationalist revolutionary movement which was particularly gaining strength in Bengal and Maharashtra from the last decade of the 1800s. In Bengal, a new Shilin Samiti, led by brothers Aurobindo and Baron Ghosh organized a number of attacks of figureheads of the Raj, culminating in the attempt on the life of a British judge in Muzaffarpur. This precipitated the Alipur bomb case, whilst a number of revolutionaries were killed, or captured and put on trial. Revolutionaries like Kudiram Bose, Prafula Chaki, Kanailal Dutt who were either killed or hanged became household names. Aurobindo Goes was one of the founding member of Gigantar, as well as being involved with nationalist politics in the Indian National Congress and the nascent revolutionary movement in Bengal with the Anushilan Samiti. Barindra Kumar Ghosh, was one of the founding members of Gigantar and younger brother of Sri Aurobindo. Jatindranath Mukherjee, Bhaga Jatin, in 1910 was the principal leader of the Gigantar Party that was the Central Association of Revolutionary Indian Independence Fighters in Bengal. Gigantar was a paramilitary organization, led by Barindra Ghosh, with 21 revolutionaries, including Bhaga Jatin, started to collect arms and explosives and manufactured bombs. Some senior members of the group were sent abroad for political and military training. One of them, Hemchandra Kanungo obtained his training in Paris. After returning to Kolkata he set up a combined religious school and bomb factory at a garden house in Maniktala suburb of Calcutta. However, the attempted murder of District Judge Kingsford of Muzaffarpur by Kudiram Bose and Prafula Chaki, 30 April 1908, initiated a police investigation that led to the arrest of many of the revolutionaries. Benoy Basu, Badal Gupta, and Dinesh Gupta were noted for launching an attack on the Secretariat building the writer's building in the Dalhousie Square in Kolkata. Bhaga Jatin was one of the senior leaders in Gigantar. He was arrested, along with several other leaders, in connection with the Howrah Sibpur conspiracy case. They were tried for treason, the charge being that they had incited various regiments of the army against the ruler. 65. Benoy Basu, Badal Gupta and Dinesh Gupta, who are noted for launching an attack on the Secretariat building, the writer's building in the Dalhousie Square in Kolkata, were Gigantar members. 66. Alipur Bomb Conspiracy Case. Several leaders of the Gigantar Party including Aurobindo Ghosh were arrested in connection with bomb-making activities in Kolkata and Hare Krishna Konar was one of the founding member of Communist Party of India, Marxist, and Communist Consolidation were arrested for connection with Calcutta Arms Act case in 1932 and deported to cellular jail. 67. Several others were also deported to the Andaman Cellular Jail for doing Indian independence movement. The Trial Room, Alipur Sessions Court, Calcutta, depiction from 1997. Marari Pakor Garden House, in the Maniktola suburbs of Calcutta. This served as the headquarters of Barindra Kumar Ghosh and his associates. Hare Krishna Konar, was connected with civil disobedience and Calcutta Arms Act case and was deported to cellular jail. There he founded Communist Consolidation. A wing of the cellular jail, Port Blair, showing the central tower where many revolutionaries for Indian independence were held imprisoned. Communist Consolidation. Several leaders of Gigantar group were imprisoned in various jails, one of which was a prominent jail of British India, Cellular Jail. The Cellular Jail was also referred to as Kalapani. In 1932 many freedom fighters from Bengal were imprisoned in cellular jail as a result of the Calcutta Arms Act case. The prisoners of cellular jail carried out their first hunger strike in 1933 due to inhumane treatment in jail. 
The prisoners encountered Marxist and communist ideology in jail and in 1935 a communist consolidation party was formed by Herr Krishna Kohner, Shiv Verma, Batukeshwar Dutt and other prisoners of cellular jail who were attracted to Marxist ideology. This party also led the second hunger strike in cellular jail, which demanded the designation of these prisoners as political prisoners rather than a freedom fighters. Delhi Lahore Conspiracy Case The Delhi Lahore Conspiracy, hatched in 1912, planned to assassinate the then Viceroy of India, Lord Hardinge, on the occasion of transferring the capital of British India from Calcutta to New Delhi. Involving revolutionary underground in Bengal and headed by Rash Bihari Bose along with Sachin Sanyal, the conspiracy culminated on the attempted assassination on 23 December 1912, when the ceremonial procession moved through the Chandni Chowk suburb of Delhi. The Viceroy escaped with his injuries, along with Lady Hardinge, although the Mahout was killed. The investigations in the aftermath of the assassination attempt led to the Delhi conspiracy trial. Basant Kumar Biswas was convicted of having thrown the bomb and executed, along with Amir Chand and Avad Bihari for their roles in the conspiracy. 69, 70, 71, 72. Basanta Kumar Biswas threw a bomb at the Viceroy's parade in what came to be known as the Delhi Lahore Conspiracy. 1. Amarendranath Chatterjee was in charge of raising funds for the Gigantar movement. His activities largely covered revolutionary centers in Bihar, Odisha and the United Provinces. All India Muslim League The All India Muslim League was founded by the All India Muhammadan Educational Conference at Dhaka, now Dhaka, Bangladesh, in 1906. Being a political party to secure the interests of the Muslim in British India, the Muslim League played a decisive role behind the creation of Pakistan in the Indian subcontinent. 74. In 1916, Muhammad Ali Jinnah joined the Indian National Congress, which was the largest Indian political organization. Like most of the Congress at the time, Jinnah did not favor outright self-rule, considering British influences on education, law, culture, and industry as beneficial to India. Jinnah became a member of the 60-member Imperial Legislative Council. The council had no real power or authority, and included a large number of unelected pro-Raj loyalists and Europeans. Nevertheless, Jinnah was instrumental in the passing of the Child Marriages Restraint Act, the legitimization of the Muslim Waq, religious endowments, and was appointed to the Sandhurst Committee, which helped establish the Indian Military Academy at Dehradun. 75. During the First World War, Jinnah joined other Indian moderates in supporting the British war effort. First World War. Indian cavalry on the Western Front during World War I. Indian Army gunners, probably 39th Battery, with 3.7-inch mountain howitzers, Jerusalem 1917. Rash Bihari Bose, was one of the key organizers of the Ghadar Mutiny and later the Indian National Army. Punjabi Sikhs aboard the SS Komagata Maru in Vancouver's Burrard Inlet, 1914. Most of the passengers were not allowed to land in Canada and the ship was forced to return to India. The events surrounding the Komagata Maru incident served as a catalyst for the Ghadarite cause. The First World War began with an unprecedented outpouring of support towards Britain from within the mainstream political leadership. Contrary to initial British fears of an Indian revolt, Indians contributed considerably to the British war effort by providing men and resources. About 1.3 million Indian soldiers and labourers served in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, while both the Indian government and the princes sent large supplies of food, money, and ammunition. Nonetheless, Bengal and Punjab remained hotbeds of anti-colonial activities. Nationalism in Bengal, increasingly associated with the unrest in Punjab, was of significant ferocity to almost complete the paralysis of the regional administration. Meanwhile, failed conspiracies were triggered by revolutionaries' lack of preparedness to organize a nationalist revolt. 76, 77. None of the revolutionary conspiracies made a significant impact inside India. The prospect that subversive violence would have an effect on a popular war effort drew support from the Indian population for special measures against anti-colonial activities in the form of Defense of India Act 1915. There were no major mutinies occurring during wartime, yet conspiracies exacerbated profound fears of insurrection among British officials, preparing them to use extreme force to frighten Indians into submission. 78. Hindu-German Conspiracy 
the 1915 Singapore Mutiny Memorial Tablet at the entrance of the Victoria Memorial Hall, Singapore. The Hindu-German Conspiracy, was a series of plans between 1914 and 1917 by Indian nationalist groups to attempt pan-Indian rebellion against the British Raj during World War I. Formulated between the Indian revolutionary underground and exiled or self-exiled nationalists who formed, in the United States, the Goddard Party, and in Germany, the Indian Independence Committee, in the decade preceding the Great War. 79, 80, 81. The conspiracy was drawn up at the beginning of the war, with extensive support from the German Foreign Office, the German Consulate in San Francisco, as well as some support from Ottoman Turkey and the Irish Republican movement. The most prominent plan attempted to foment unrest and trigger a pan-Indian mutiny in the British Indian Army from Punjab to Singapore. This plot was planned to be executed in February 1915 with the aim of overthrowing British rule over the Indian subcontinent. The February mutiny was ultimately thwarted when British intelligence infiltrated the Ghadarite movement and arrested key figures. Mutinies in smaller units and garrisons within India were also crushed. Other related events include the 1915 Singapore Mutiny, the Annie Larson Arms Plot, the Gigantar German Plot, the German Mission to Kabul, the Mutiny of the Connaught Rangers in India, as well as, by some accounts, the Black Tom Explosion in 1916. Parts of the conspiracy included efforts to subvert the British Indian Army in the Middle Eastern theatre of World War. Goddard Mutiny the public executions of convicted sepoy mutineers of the 1915 Singapore Mutiny at Outram Road, Singapore. The Ghadar Mutiny was a plan to initiate a pan-Indian mutiny in the British Indian Army in February 1915 to end the British Raj in India. The plot originated at the onset of World War I, between the Ghadar Party in the United States, the Berlin Committee in Germany, the Indian Revolutionary Underground in British India and the German Foreign Office through the Consulate in San Francisco. The incident derives its name from the North American Ghadar Party, whose members of the Punjabi Sikh community in Canada and the United States were among the most prominent participants in the plan. It was the most prominent amongst a number of plans of the much larger Hindu-German mutiny, formulated between 1914 and 1917 to initiate a pan-Indian rebellion against the British Raj during World War I. 79, 80, 81. The mutiny was planned to start in the key state of Punjab, followed by mutinies in Bengal and rest of India. Indian units as far as Singapore were planned to participate in the rebellion. The plans were thwarted through a coordinated intelligence and police response. British intelligence infiltrated the Ghadarite movement in Canada and in India, and last-minute intelligence from a spy helping to crush the planned uprising in Punjab before it started. Key figures were arrested. Mutinies in smaller units and garrisons within India were also crushed. Intelligence about the threat of the mutiny led to a number of important wartime measures introduced in India, including the Passages of Ingress into India Ordinance, 1914, the Foreigners Act 1914, and the Defense of India Act 1915. The conspiracy was followed by the first Lahore Conspiracy Trial and Benares Conspiracy Trial which saw death sentences awarded to a number of Indian revolutionaries and exile to a number of others. After the end of the war, fear of a second Ghadarite uprising led to the recommendations of the Rolet Acts and thence the Jallianwala Bagh Massacre. First Christmas Day and Second Christmas Day Plot. Bagha Jatin after the final battle, Balasore, 1915. The First Christmas Day Plot was a conspiracy made by the Indian Revolutionary Movement in 1909. During the year-ending holidays, the governor of Bengal organized at his residence a ball in the presence of the viceroy, the commander-in-chief and all the high-ranking officers and officials of the capital, Calcutta. The 10th Jat Regiment was in charge of the security. Indoctrinated by Jatindranath Mukherjee, its soldiers decided to blow up the ballroom and take advantage of destroying the colonial government. In keeping with his predecessor Otto, William Oskarovich, von Klem, a friend of Lokomanya Tilak, on 6 February 1910, M. Arsenyev, the Russian consul general, wrote to St. Petersburg that it had been intended to arouse in the country a general perturbation of minds and, thereby, afford the revolutionaries an opportunity to take the power in their hands. 82. According to R. C. Majumdar, the police had suspected nothing and it is hard to say what the outcome would have been had the soldiers not been betrayed by one of their comrades who informed the authorities about the impending coup, 83. 
The second Christmas Day plot was to initiate an insurrection in Bengal in British India during World War I with German arms and support. Scheduled for Christmas Day, 1915, the plan was conceived and led by the Jugantar group under the Bengali Indian revolutionary Jatindranath Mukherjee, to be coordinated with simultaneous uprising in the British colony of Burma and Kingdom of Siam under direction of the Ghadar Party, along with a German raid on the South Indian city of Madras and the British penal colony in Andaman Islands. The aim of the plot was to seize the Fort William, isolate Bengal and capture the capital city of Calcutta, which was then to be used as a staging ground for a pan-Indian revolution. The Christmas Day plot was one of the later plans for pan-Indian mutiny during the war that were coordinated between the Indian Nationalist Underground, the Indian Independence Committee, set up by the Germans in Berlin, the Ghadar Party in North America, and the German Foreign Office. 84. The plot was ultimately thwarted after British intelligence uncovered the plot through German and Indian double agents in Europe and Southeast Asia. Neidermayer Hentig Expedition. Mahendra Pratap, Center, President of the Provisional Government of India, at the head of the mission with the German and Turkish delegates in Kabul, 1915. Seated to his right is Werner Otto von Hentig. The Neidermayer Hentig Expedition was a diplomatic mission to Afghanistan sent by the Central Powers in 1915-1916. The purpose was to encourage Afghanistan to declare full independence from the British Empire, enter World War I on the side of the Central Powers, and attack British India. The expedition was part of the Hindu-German Conspiracy, a series of Indo-German efforts to provoke a nationalist revolution in India. Nominally headed by the exiled Indian Prince Raja Mahendra Pratap, the expedition was a joint operation of Germany and Turkey and was led by the German army officers Oskar Neidermayer and Werner Otto von Hentig. Other participants included members of an Indian nationalist organization called the Berlin Committee, including Maulavi Barkatula and Chempakaraman Pillai, while the Turks were represented by Kazim Bey, a close confidant of Inbir Pasha. Britain saw the expedition as a serious threat. Britain and its ally, the Russian Empire, unsuccessfully attempted to intercept it in Persia during the summer of 1915. Britain waged a covert intelligence and diplomatic offensive, including personal interventions by the Viceroy Lord Hardinge and King George V, to maintain Afghan neutrality. The mission failed in its main task of rallying Afghanistan, under Amir Habibullah Khan, to the German and Turkish war effort, but it influenced other major events. In Afghanistan, the expedition triggered reforms and drove political turmoil that culminated in the assassination of the Emir in 1919, which in turn precipitated the Third Afghan War. It influenced the Kalmyk project of nascent Bolshevik Russia to propagate socialist revolution in Asia, with one goal being the overthrow of the British Raj. Other consequences included the formation of the Rolet Committee to investigate sedition in India as influenced by Germany and Bolshevism, and changes in the Raj's approach to the Indian independence movement immediately after World War I. Nationalist response to war. Edit. In the aftermath of the First World War, high casualty rates, soaring inflation compounded by heavy taxation, a widespread influenza pandemic and the disruption of trade during the war escalated human suffering in India. The pre-war nationalist movement revived moderate and extremist groups within the Congress submerged their differences in order to stand together as a unified front. They argued that their enormous services to the British Empire during the war demanded a reward to demonstrate Indian capacity for self-rule. In 1916, Congress succeeded in forging the Lucknow Pact, a temporary alliance with the All India Muslim League over the issues of devolution and the future of Islam in the region. 85. British Reforms. Edit. The British themselves adopted a carrot and stick approach in recognition of India's support during the war and in response to renewed nationalist demands. In August 1917, Edwin Montague, Secretary of State for India, made an historic announcement in Parliament that the British policy was for increasing association of Indians in every branch of the administration and the gradual development of self-governing institutions with a view to the progressive realization of responsible government in India as an integral part of the British Empire. The means of achieving the proposed measures were later enshrined in the Government of India Act, 1919, which introduced the principle of a dual mode of administration, or diarchy, in which both elected Indian legislators and appointed British officials shared power. The Act also expanded the central and provincial legislatures and widened the franchise considerably. The diarchy set in motion certain real changes at the provincial level, 
a number of non-controversial or transferred portfolios, such as agriculture, local government, health, education, and public works, were handed over to Indians, while more sensitive matters such as finance, taxation, and maintaining law and order were retained by the provincial British administrators. Gandhi in 1918, at the time of the Kedah Satyagraha and Champaran Satyagraha. Sitting L to R, Rajendra Prasad and Anugra Narayan Sinha during Mahatma Gandhi's 1917 Champaran Satyagraha. The Martyr's Well of Jallianwala Bagh Massacre. At Jallianwala Bagh, 120 bodies were recovered from this well as per inscription on it. 87. Sidney Rowlett, best remembered for his controversial presidency of the Rowlett Committee a sedition committee appointed in 1918 by the British Indian government to evaluate the links between political terrorism in India, the actions indirectly led to the infamous Jallianwala Bagh massacre of 1919. Gandhi had been a leader of the Indian nationalist movement in South Africa. He had also been a vocal opponent of basic discrimination and abusive labor treatment as well as suppressive police control such as the Rowlett Acts. During these protests, Gandhi had perfected the concept of Satyagraha. In January 1914, well before the First World War began, Gandhi was successful. The legislation against Indians was repealed and all Indian political prisoners were released by General Jan Smuts. 88 Gandhi accomplished this through extensive use of nonviolent protests, such as boycotting, protest marching, and fasting by him and his followers. 89 Note 2 Gandhi returned to India on 9 January 1915, and initially entered the political fray not with calls for a nation-state, but in support of the unified commerce-oriented territory that the Congress party had been asking for. Gandhi believed that the industrial development and educational development that the Europeans had brought were long required to alleviate many of India's chronic problems. Gopal Krishna Gokhale, a veteran congressman and Indian leader, became Gandhi's mentor. Gandhi's ideas and strategies of nonviolent civil disobedience initially appeared impractical to some Indians and their Congress leaders. In the Mahatma's own words, civil disobedience is civil breach of a moral statutory enactments. It had to be carried out nonviolently by withdrawing cooperation with the corrupt state. Gandhi had great respect for Lakmanya Tilak. His programs were all inspired by Tilak's Chattasutri program. The positive impact of reform was seriously undermined in 1919 by the Rowlett Act, named after the recommendations made the previous year to the Imperial Legislative Council by the Rowlett Committee. The commission was set up to look into the wartime conspiracies by the nationalist organizations and recommend measures to deal with the problem in the post-war period. Rowlett recommended the extension of the wartime powers of the Defense of India Act into the post-war period. The Wartime Act had vested the Viceroy's government with extraordinary powers to quell sedition by silencing the press, detaining political activists without trial, and arresting any individuals suspected of sedition or treason without a warrant. It was increasingly reviled within India due to widespread and indiscriminate use. Many popular leaders, including Annie Besant and Ali Brothers had been detained. The Rowlett Act was, therefore, passed in the face of universal opposition among the non-official Indian members in the Viceroy's Council. The extension of the act drew widespread critical opposition. A nationwide cessation of work, Hartle, was called, marking the beginning of widespread, although not nationwide, popular discontent. The agitation unleashed by the acts led to demonstrations and British repressions, culminating on 13 April 1919, in the Jallianwala Bagh massacre, also known as the Amritsar massacre, in Amritsar, Punjab. In response to agitation in Amritsar, Brigadier General Reginald Dyer blocked the main, and only entrance, and ordered troops under his command to fire into an unarmed and unsuspecting crowd of some 15,000 men, women, and children. They had assembled peacefully at Jallianwala Bagh, a walled courtyard, but Dyer had wanted to execute the imposed ban on all meetings and proposed to teach all protesters a lesson the harsher way. 90. A total of 1,651 rounds were fired, killing 379 people, as according to an official British commission. Indian officials' estimates ranged as high as 1,499 and wounding 1,137 in the massacre. 91. Dyer was forced to retire but was hailed as a hero by some in Britain demonstrating to Indian nationalists that the empire was beholden to public opinion in Britain, but not in India.
92. The episode dissolved wartime hopes of home rule and goodwill and opened a rift that could not be bridged short of complete self-rule. 93. First non-cooperation movemented it. From 1920 to 1922, Gandhi started the non-cooperation movement. At the Kolkata session of the Congress in September 1920, Gandhi convinced other leaders of the need to start a non-cooperation movement in support of Khilafat as well as for dominion status. The first Satyagraha movement urged the use of Khadi and Indian material as alternatives to those shipped from Britain. It also urged people to boycott British educational institutions and law courts, resign from government employment, refuse to pay taxes, and forsake British titles and honours. Although this came too late to influence the framing of the new Government of India Act 1919, the movement enjoyed widespread popular support, and the resulting unparalleled magnitude of disorder presented a serious challenge to foreign rule. However, Gandhi called off the movement because he was scared after Chori Chora incident, which saw the death of 22 policemen at the hands of an angry mob that India would descend into anarchy. Membership in the party was open to anyone prepared to pay a token fee. A hierarchy of committees was established, made responsible for discipline and control over a hitherto amorphous and diffuse movement. The party was transformed from an elite organization to one of mass national appeal and participation. Gandhi was sentenced in 1922 to six years in prison, but was released after serving two. On his release from prison, he set up the Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad. On the banks of the river Sabarmati, he established the newspaper Young India, introducing a series of reforms aimed at the socially disadvantaged within Hindu society, the rural poor, and the untouchables. 94, 95. This era saw the emergence of a new generation of Indians from within the Congress party, including Maulana Azad, C. Rajagopalachari, Jawaharlal Nehru, Vallabhai Patel, Subhas Chandra Bose and others who would, later on, come to form the most prominent voices of the Indian self-rule movement whether keeping with Gandhian values, or, as in the case of Bose's Indian National Army, diverging from it. The Indian political spectrum was further broadened in the mid-1920s by the emergence of both moderate and militant parties, such as the Swaraj Party, Hindu Mahasabha, Communist Party of India and the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sang. Regional political organizations also continued to represent the interests of non-Brahmins in Madras, Mahars in Maharashtra, and Sikhs in Punjab. However, people like Mahakavi Subramanya Bharati, Vanchinathan, and Nilakanda Brahmachari played a major role from Tamil Nadu in both self-rule struggle and fighting for equality for all castes and communities. Many women participated in the movement, including Kasturba Gandhi, Gandhi's wife, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, Mutulakshmi Reddy, Aruna Asaf Ali, and many others. Result of movements by Gandhi edit the mass movements sparked nationalist sentiment with the Indian populace and figures like Mahatma Gandhi united a nation behind his non-violence movement. Philosophy and undoubtedly put crucial pressure on the British occupation. The movements failed in their primary objective, achieving independence for India, as they were often called off before they naturally concluded due to laws and punishment. While in the later years of the Raj economic factors like the reversing trade fortunes between Britain and India and the cost of fielding the Indian armed forces abroad lumped on the British taxpayer by the 1935 Government of India Act, had mounting implications for British administration, united resistance further drew light on the growing disparity of the British failures to achieve solidarity over India. On 14 July 1942 the Congress Working Committee, Indian National Congress, whose president Abul Kalam Azad supported Gandhi, passed a resolution demanding complete independence from the British government, and proposed massive civil disobedience if the British did not accede to the demands. On 8 August 1942 the Quit India movement, Bharat Chodo Andolan, began. A civil disobedience movement in India in response to Mahatma Gandhi's call for immediate self-rule by Indians and against sending Indians to World War II. Other major parties rejected the Quit India plan, and most cooperated closely with the British, as did the princely states, the civil service, and the police. The Muslim League supported the Raj and grew rapidly in membership, and in influence with the British. The British swiftly responded to the Quit India movement with mass arrests. Over 100,000 arrests were made, massive fines were levied, and demonstrators were subjected to public flogging. 
Hundreds of civilians were killed in violence many shot by the police army. Tens of thousands of leaders were also arrested and imprisoned until 1945. Ultimately, the British government realized that India was ungovernable in the long run, and the question for the post-war era became how to exit gracefully and peacefully. Purna Swaraj. Movement. It did not succeed by itself, but it brought the Indian population together, under the Indian National Congress's leadership. The movement resulted in self-rule being a talking point once again, and recruited more Indians to the idea. The movement allowed the Indian independence community to revive their inner confidence and strength against the British government. In addition, the movement weakened the authority of the British and aided in the end of the British Empire in India. Overall, the civil disobedience movement was an essential achievement in the history of Indian self-rule because it persuaded New Delhi of the role of the masses in self-determination. Elections and the Lahore Resolution. The Government of India Act 1935. The voluminous and final constitutional effort at governing British India, articulated three major goals. Establishing a loose federal structure, achieving provincial autonomy, and safeguarding minority interests through separate electorates. The federal provisions, intended to unite princely states and British India at the centre, were not implemented because of ambiguities in safeguarding the existing privileges of princes. In February 1937, however, provincial autonomy became a reality when elections were held. The Congress emerged as the dominant party with a clear majority in five provinces and held an upper hand in two, while the Muslim League performed poorly. In 1939, the Viceroy Linlithgow declared India's entrance into the Second World War without consulting provincial governments. In protest, the Congress asked all of its elected representatives to resign from the government. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the president of the All India Muslim League, persuaded participants at the annual Muslim League session at Lahore in 1940 to adopt what later came to be known as the Lahore Resolution, demanding the division of India into two separate sovereign states, one Muslim, the other Hindu, sometimes referred to as two-nation theory. Although the idea of Pakistan had been introduced as early as 1930, very few had responded to it. In opposition to the Lahore Resolution, the All India Azad Muslim Conference gathered in Delhi in April 1940 to voice its support for a united India. 101. Its members included several Islamic organizations in India, as well as 1400 nationalist Muslim delegates. 102. 103. The attendance at the nationalist meeting was about five times than the attendance at the League meeting. 104. The All India Muslim League worked to try to silence those Muslims who stood against the partition of India often using intimidation and coercion 104 103 the murder of the all india azad muslim conference leader ala bash sumro also made it easier for the all india muslim league to demand the creation of pakistan revolutionary movement regiments of the british indian army 114 the assassination of william hutt curzon willie in the hands of madanlal dingra was highly publicized and saw increasing surveillance and suppression of indian nationalism 115. These were followed by the 1912 attempt on the life of Viceroy of India. Following this, the nucleus of networks formed in India House, the Anushilan Samiti, nationalists in Punjab, and the nationalism that arose among Indian expatriates and labourers in North America. A different movement began to emerge in the North American Ghadar Party, culminating in the seditious conspiracy of World War I led by Rash Bihari Bose and Lala Hardale. India House founded by Shyamji Krishna Varma to promote nationalist views among Indian students in Britain. A number of blue plaques commemorate the stay of its various Indian revolutionaries including, Maidan Lal Dingra, VVS Iyar, Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, Senapati Bapat, MPT Acharya, Anant Laxman Kanhir and Kempakaraman Pillai. However, the emergence of the Gandhian movement slowly began to absorb the different revolutionary groups. The Bengal Samiti moved away from its philosophy of violence in the 1920s, when a number of its members identified closely with the Congress and Gandhian non-violent movement. Revolutionary nationalist violence saw a resurgence after the collapse of Gandhian non-cooperation movement in 1922. In Bengal, this saw reorganization of groups linked to the Samiti under the leadership of Surya Sen and Hem Chandra Kanungo. A spate of violence led up to the enactment of the Bengal Criminal Law Amendment in the early 1920s, 
which recalled the powers of incarceration and detention of the Defense of India Act. In North India, remnants of Punjab and Bengali revolutionary organizations reorganized, notably under Sachindranath Sanyal, founding the Hindustan Republican Association with Chandrasekhar Azad in North India. The HSRA had strong influences from leftist ideologies. Hindustan Socialist Republican Association, HSRA, was formed under the leadership of Chandrasekhar Azad. Kokori train robbery was done largely by the members of HSRA. A number of Congress leaders from Bengal, especially Subhash Chandra Bose, were accused by the British government of having links with and allowing patronage to the revolutionary organizations during this time. The violence and radical philosophy revived in the 1930s, when revolutionaries of the Samiti and the HSRA were involved in the Chittagong Armoury Raid and the Kokori Conspiracy and other attempts against the administration in British India and Raj officials. Sachindra Nath Sanyal mentored revolutionaries in the Hindustan Socialist Republican Army, HSRA, including Bhagat Singh and Jatindra Nath Das, among others. Including arms training and how to make bombs. 116. Bhagat Singh and Batukeshwar Dutt threw a bomb inside the Central Legislative Assembly on 8 April 1929 protesting against the passage of the Public Safety Bill and the Trade Disputes Bill while raising slogans of Inquilab Zindabad, though no one was killed or injured in the bomb incident. Bhagat Singh surrendered after the bombing incident and a trial was conducted. Sukhdev and Rajguru were also arrested by police during search operations after the bombing incident. Following the trial, Central Assembly bomb case, Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev and Rajguru were hanged in 1931. Alama Mashriki founded Koksar Tariq in order to direct particularly the Muslims towards the self-rule movement. 117. Some of its members left for the Indian National Congress then led by Subhas Chandra Bose, while others identified more closely with communism. The Gigantar branch formally dissolved in 1938. On 13 March 1940, Udum Singh shot Michael O'Dwyer, the last political murder outside India, generally held responsible for the Amritsar massacre, in London. However, the revolutionary movement gradually disseminated into the Gandhian movement. As the political scenario changed in the late 1930s, with the mainstream leaders considering several options offered by the British and with religious politics coming into play, revolutionary activities gradually declined. Many past revolutionaries joined mainstream politics by joining Congress and other parties, especially communist ones, while many of the activists were kept under hold in different jails across the country. Indians who were based in the UK, joined the India League and the Indian Workers' Association, partaking in revolutionary activities in Britain. 118. Within a short time of its inception, these organizations became the focus of an extensive police and intelligence operations. Operations against a New Zealand Samiti saw founding of the special branch of Calcutta Police. The intelligence operations against India House saw the founding of the Indian Political Intelligence Office which later grew to be the Intelligence Bureau in independent India. Heading the intelligence and missions against Ghadarite movement and India revolutionaries was the MI5, G, section, and at one point involved the Pinkerton's Detective Agency. Notable officers who led the police and intelligence operations against Indian revolutionaries, or were involved in it, at various time included John Arnold Wallinger, Sir Robert Nathan, Sir Harold Stewart, Vernon Kell, Sir Charles Stevenson Moore and Sir Charles Tegart, as well as W. Somerset Mom. The threat posed by the activities of the Samiti in Bengal during World War I, along with the threat of a Gujarat uprising in Punjab, saw the passage of Defense of India Act 1915. These measures saw the arrest, internment, transportations, and execution of a number of revolutionaries linked to the organization, and was successful in crushing the East Bengal branch. In the aftermath of the war, the Rollet Committee recommended extending the Defense of India Act, as the Rollet Act, to thwart any possible revival of the Samiti in Bengal and the Gujarat movement in Punjab. In the 1920s, Alori Sitarama Raju led the ill-fated Rampa Rebellion of 1922-24, during which a band of tribal leaders and other sympathizers fought against the British Raj. Local people referred to him as Manyam Virudu, Hero of the Jungles. After the passage of the 1882 Madras Forest Act, 
Its restrictions on the free movement of tribal peoples in the forest prevented them from engaging in their traditional podu, slash and burn, agricultural system, which involved shifting cultivation. Raju started a protest movement in the border areas of the Godavari Agency part of Madras Presidency, present-day Andhra Pradesh. Inspired by the patriotic zeal of revolutionaries in Bengal, Raju raided police stations in and around Chintapal, Rampachodavaram, Damanapali, Krishna Devi Pita, Rajabamanji, Adadigala, Narsapatnam and Anavaram. Raju and his followers stole guns and ammunition and killed several British Indian Army officers, including Scott Coward near Damanapali. 119. The British campaign lasted for nearly a year from December 1922. Raju was eventually trapped by the British in the forests of Chintapali then tied to a tree and shot dead with a rifle. 119. The Kalara Pangode struggle was one of some 39 agitations against the government of India. The Home Department has later notified about 38 movements. Struggles across Indian territories as the ones that culminated in self-rule ended the British Raj. Jatindra Nath Das was arrested for revolutionary activities and was imprisoned in Lahore jail to be tried under the supplementary Lahore conspiracy case and died in Lahore jail after a 63-day hunger strike. Kempa Karaman Pillai was involved in the Hindu-German conspiracy along with the Ghadar Party in the United States. Surya Sen, best known for leading the 1930 Chittagong Armory Raid. Bikaiji Kama, raised flag of Indian independence, in Stuttgart, Germany. Vanchinathan, in a letter found in his pocket, stated the following. I dedicate my life as a small contribution to my motherland. I am alone responsible for this. The Malechas of England having captured our country, tread over the Sanatana Dharma of the Hindus and destroy them. Every Indian is trying to drive out the English and get Swarajam and restore Sanatana Dharma. Our Raman, Savaji, Krishnan, Guru Govindan, Arjuna ruled our land protecting all dharmas, but in this land, they are making arrangements to crown George V, a Malecha, and one who eats the flesh of cows. 3,000 Madrasis have taken a vow to kill George V as soon as he lands in our country. In order to make others know our intention, I who am the least in the company, have done this deed this day. This is what everyone in Hindustan should consider it as his duty. I will kill Ash, whose arrival here is to celebrate the crowning of cow-eater King George V in this glorious land which was once ruled by great Samrats. This I do to make them understand the fate of those who cherish the thought of enslaving this sacred land. I, as the least of them, wish to warn George by killing Ash. Vand Mataram. Vand Mataram. Vand Mataram Vanchinathan. The agitations, mass strikes, demonstrations and consequently support for the mutineers, therefore continued several days even after the mutiny had been called off. Along with this, the assessment may be made that it described in crystal clear terms to the government that the British Indian Armed Forces could no longer be universally relied upon for support in crisis, and even more it was more likely itself to be the source of the sparks that would ignite trouble in a country fast slipping out of the scenario of political settlement. 134. The mutiny ended with the surrender of revolting the sailors to British officials. Congress and the Muslim League had convinced Indian sailors to surrender. They condemned the mutiny due to the political and military risks of unrest. Impact of World War II. Country fast slipping out of the scenario of political settlement. 134. The mutiny ended with the surrender of revolting the sailors to British officials. Congress and the Muslim League had convinced Indian sailors to surrender. They condemned the mutiny due to the political and military risks of unrest. Impact of World War II World War II was one of the most significant factors in accelerating Indian independence, and the independence of many British and non-British colonies. In the period 1945-1965, decolonization led to more than three dozen countries getting freedom from their colonial powers. 135. Many factors contributed to the downfall of the British Empire. When Britain reached out to the US asking for help in the war, the U.S. offered help contingent on Britain decolonizing post-World War II, and that agreement was codified in the Atlantic Charter. The decolonization of Britain, post-war, also meant that the U.S. and other countries could possibly have access to markets to sell goods that were previously under the British Empire, which were not accessible to them then. 136, 137. To bring about these changes, 
the establishment of the UN following World War II codified sovereignty for nations, and encouraged free trade. The war also forced the British to come to an agreement with Indian leaders to grant them independence if they helped with war efforts since India had one of the largest armies. 138. Also, following World War II, it was untenable for Britain to raise capital on its own to keep its colonies. They needed to rely on America and did so via the Marshall Plan to rebuild their country. Sovereignty and Partition of India. Rare photograph of Hindustan Times newspaper when India got its independence from the British. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru became the first Prime Minister of India in 1947. On 3 June 1947, Viscount Louis Mountbatten, the last British Governor-General of India, announced the partitioning of British India into India and Pakistan. With the speedy passage of the Indian Independence Act 1947, at 11.57 on 14 August 1947 Pakistan was declared a separate nation. Then at 12.02 a.m., on 15 August 1947 India became a sovereign and democratic nation. Eventually, 15 August became Independence Day for India marking the end of British India. Also on 15 August, both Pakistan and India had the right to remain in or remove themselves from the British Commonwealth. But in 1949, India took the decision to remain in the Commonwealth. Violent clashes between Hindus, Sikhs, and Muslims followed. Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and Deputy Prime Minister Sardar Vallabhai Patel had invited Mountbatten to continue as Governor-General of India during the period of transition. He was replaced in June 1948 by Chakravarti Rajagopalachari. In May 1947, Nehru declared that any princely state which refused to join the Constituent Assembly would be treated as an enemy state. Patel took on the responsibility for bringing princely states into the Union of India, steering efforts by his iron fist in a velvet glove policies there was the use of military force to integrate junagadh hyderabad state operation polo and kashmir instrument of accession to india 139 the constituent assembly headed by the prominent lawyer reformer and dalit leader b r ambedkar was tasked heading the creation of the constitution of independent india and the constitution was drafted by b n Rao. The Constituent Assembly completed the work of drafting the Constitution on 26 November 1949. On 26 January 1950, the Republic of India was officially proclaimed. The Constituent Assembly elected Rajendra Prasad was the first President of India, taking over from Governor-General Raj Gopalachari. Subsequently, the French ceded Chandernagore in 1951, and Pondicherry and its remaining Indian colonies by 1954. Indian troops annexed Goa and Portugal's other Indian enclaves in 1961, and Sikkim voted to join the Indian Union in 1975 after the Indian victory over China in Nathula and Chola. Following self-rule in 1947, India remained in the Commonwealth of Nations, and relations between the UK and India have since become friendly. There are many areas in which the two countries seek stronger ties for mutual benefit, and there are also strong cultural and social ties between the two nations. The UK has an ethnic Indian population of over 1.6 million. In 2010, Prime Minister David Cameron described Indian-British relations as a new special relationship. 140. Partition of India. The partition of India in 1947 was the change of political borders and the division of other assets that accompanied the dissolution of the British Raj in South Asia and the creation of two independent dominions, India and Pakistan. 1. 2. The Dominion of India is today the Republic of India, and the Dominion of Pakistan, which at the time comprised two regions lying on either side of India, is now the Islamic Republic of Pakistan and the People's Republic of Bangladesh. The partition was outlined in the Indian Independence Act 1947. The change of political borders notably included the division of two provinces of British India, of Bengal and Punjab. Three. The majority Muslim districts in these provinces were awarded to Pakistan and the majority non-Muslim to India. The other assets that were divided included the British Indian Army, the Royal Indian Navy, the Royal Indian Air Force, the Indian Civil Service, the Railways, and the Central Treasury. Self-governing independent India and Pakistan legally came into existence at midnight on 14 to 15 August 1947. Partition of Bengal, 1947 
The partition of Bengal in 1947, part of the partition of India, divided the British Indian Bengal province along the Radcliffe line between the Dominion of India and the Dominion of Pakistan. The Hindu majority West Bengal became a state of India, and the Muslim majority East Bengal, now Bangladesh, became a province of Pakistan. On 20 June 1947, the Bengal Legislative Assembly met to decide the future of the Bengal province, as between being a united Bengal within India or Pakistan or divided into East and West Bengal. At the preliminary joint session, the Assembly decided by 120 to 90 that it should remain united if it joined the new Constituent Assembly of Pakistan. Later, a separate meeting of legislators from West Bengal decided by 58 to 21 that the province should be partitioned and that West Bengal should join the existing Constituent Assembly of India. In another separate meeting of legislators from East Bengal, it was decided by 106 to 35 that the province should not be partitioned and by 107 to 34 that East Bengal should join Pakistan in the event of partition. 1. On the 6th of July 1947, the Sillet referendum decided to sever Sillet from Assam and merge it into East Bengal. The partition, with power transferred to Pakistan and India on the 14th to the 15th of August 1947, was done according to what has come to be known as the 3rd of June plan or the Mountbatten Plan. Indian independence, on 15 August 1947, ended over 150 years of British rule and influence in the Indian subcontinent. East Pakistan became the independent country of Bangladesh after the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War. Independence Day. India Independence Day is celebrated annually on 15 August as a public holiday in India commemorating the nation's independence from the United Kingdom on 15 August 1947, the day when the provisions of the Indian Independence Act, which transferred legislative sovereignty to the Indian Constituent Assembly, came into effect. India retained King George VI as head of state until its transition to a republic, when the Constitution of India came into effect on 26 January 1950 celebrated as Indian Republic Day, and replaced the Dominion prefix, Dominion of India, with the enactment of the Sovereign Law Constitution of India. India attained independence following the independence movement noted for largely non-violent resistance and civil disobedience. Independence Day, Pakistan, Independence Day, Urdu, yam e azadi observed annually on 14 August, is a national holiday in Pakistan. It commemorates the day when Pakistan achieved independence and was declared a sovereign state following the end of the British Raj in 1947. Pakistan came into existence as a result of the Pakistan movement, which aimed for the creation of an independent Muslim state in the northwestern regions of British India via partition. 1, 2, 3. The movement was led by the All India Muslim League under the leadership of Muhammad Ali Jinnah. The event was brought forth by the Indian Independence Act 1947 under which the British Raj gave independence to the Dominion of Pakistan which comprised West Pakistan, present-day Pakistan, and East Pakistan, now Bangladesh. In the Islamic calendar, the Day of Independence coincided with Ramadan 27, the eve of which, being Laylat al-Qaeda, is regarded as sacred by Muslims. Revolutionary Movement for Indian Independence the Revolutionary Movement for Indian Independence was part of the Indian Independence Movement comprising the actions of violent underground revolutionary factions. Groups believing in armed revolution against the ruling British fall into this category, as opposed to the generally peaceful civil disobedience movement spearheaded by Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. The revolutionary groups were mainly concentrated in Bengal, Maharashtra, Bihar, the United Provinces and Punjab. More groups were scattered across India. Women of the Indian Independence Movement The Indian Independence Movement was a series of historic events with the ultimate aim of ending British rule in India, lasting from 1857 to 1947. Women played a pivotal role in achieving India's independence. However, their lives, struggles, and contributions to the movement are never recognized at the same level of prominence as that of the men of the movement. Additionally, their names are seldom heard when discussing the independence movement, or mentioned in brief. Women's participation in India's freedom struggle started as early as 1817. Bhima Bai Holkar fought against the British Colonel Malcolm and defeated him in guerrilla warfare. One, throughout the 20th century, numerous women continued to contribute to the movement through military leadership, 
political leadership, and social activism. Pritalata Wadadar was a member of the Chittagong-based Indian Republican Army, who died on September 24, 1932 after successfully leading a siege on the Pahardali European Club in Chittagong. 2. Sarojini Naidu was an Indian political activist and poet. A proponent of civil rights, women's emancipation, and anti-imperialistic ideas, she was an important figure in India's struggle for independence from colonial rule. 3. Rani Lakshmibai, also known as Jhansi Ki Rani, was born in 1835. 4. She was one of the leading figures of the Indian Rebellion of 1857 and became a symbol of resistance to the British Raj for Indian nationalists. Kasturba Gandhi was an Indian political activist. She married Mohandas Gandhi in 1883. With her husband and son, she was involved in the Indian independence movement in British India. 5. Communist involvement in Indian independence movement. Communists were actively involved in Indian independence movement through multiple series of protests, strikes and other activities. It was a part of revolutionary movement for Indian independence. Their main thrust was on organizing peasants and working classes across India against the British and Indian capitalists and landlords. 1. Communist organizations during independence movement. Hindustan Socialist Republican Association. Following the non-cooperation movement of 1919, Hindustan Republican Association, HRA, was formed by Sachindra Nath Sanyal, Jadugopal Mukherjee and Jogesh Chandra Chatterjee after a meeting in Kanpur. The HRA had branches in West Bengal, Agra, Allahabad, Benares, Kanpur, Lucknow, Saharanpur and Shah Jahanpur. Afterwards it became Hindustan Socialist Republican Association by influence of Bhagat Singh and decided that the new organization would work in cooperation with the Communist International. They were also involved in manufacturing bombs in Calcutta, at Dakshineswar and Shobabazar, and at Diogar in Jharkhand, then Bihar province. Kokori train robbery was the most prominent efforts, where they looted government money from a train around 10 miles, 16 kilometers, from Lucknow. Significant members of the HRSA were arrested and tried for their involvement in that incident and others which had preceded it. The outcome was that four leaders, Ashfachula Khan, Ram Prasad Bismal, Roshan Singh and Rajendra Lahiri, were hanged in December 1927 and a further 16 imprisoned for lengthy terms. The result of the trial, in which the HRSA participants sang patriotic songs and displayed other forms of defiance, seriously damaged the leadership of the HRSA and dealt a major blow to its activities. Many associated with the HRSA who escaped trial found themselves placed under surveillance or detained for various reasons. Chandra Shikhar Azad was the only one of the principal leaders who managed to escape arrest whereas Banwari Lal became an approver. 2. HRSA was in protest against the Simon Commission. They bombed the members of the Simon Commission. Following the death of Lala Lajpat Rai, who died due to Lathi charge while leading a peaceful protest against the commission, they bombed the Central Legislative Assembly in Delhi. They demonstrated protest against the introduction of the Public Safety Bill and the Trade Disputes Bill, both of which had been drafted in an attempt to counter the effects of revolutionary activities and trade unionism. 2. 3. The assembly bomb case and the Saunders murder case trial followed and Singh, Sukhdev and Rajguru were hanged on 23 March 1931 for their actions. 2. 3. Communist consolidation. On 12 May 1933, some of the prisoners of cellular jail gathered and started a hunger strike, causing the deaths of Mahavir Singh, Mohan Kishore Namadas, and Mohit Moitra. The British Raj acceded to the demands of the freedom fighters to stop the hunger strike and finally after 46 days hunger strike end on 26 June 1933. This marked the beginning of the revolutionary communist group. It was the largest resistance group against British rule in the jail. In 1935, communist consolidation was founded by 39 inmates, and led by communist leader Herr Krishna Kohner. The maximum of its members believed on the concept of Marxism and communist or gigantar part of a new Shilin Samiti. Although this was a secret revolutionary group and the members of this organization swelled higher and higher. 4. 5. This organization again led the historical 36 days hunger strike in 1937 where the British government had to bow before the demands of the political prisoners. 6. They used slogans like, Inquilab Zindabad, and, Dunia came as Doran Ek Ho, 7. 8. 
Gradually the organization's membership expanded rapidly to more than 800 inmates. Some of its notable members were, Hare Krishna Koner, founder of this organization, in April 1935, 9. Niranjan Sengupta Sudangshu Dasgupta Nalini Dasgupta. Shiv Verma Ganesh Ghosh Batukeshwar Dutt. 10. J. Dev Kapoor. Ambika Chakrabarti. Satish Prakrashi. Sachindra Nath Sanyal. Vaiplavi Dhruvesh Chattopadhyay. Ananta Chakraborty. Sabad Roy. Bajoy Kumar Sinha. Jatindra Nath Das. Fakir Sen. Manmath Nath Gupta. Communist Party of India. The Communist Party of India, one of the major communist party, which is still in existence, was formed on 26 December 1925 in Kanpur. S. B. Gaite was the first general secretary of CPI. There were many communist groups formed by Indians with the help of foreigners in different parts of the world. Tashkent group of contacts were made with Anishilan and Jugantar the groups in Bengal, and small communist groups were formed in Bombay, led by S.A. Dang, Madras, led by Singaravalu Chedir, United Provinces, led by Shakat Usmani, Punjab. Sindh, led by Ghulam Hussain, and Bengal, led by Muzaffar Ahmed. During the 1920s and the early 1930s the party was badly organized, and in practice there were several communist groups working with limited national coordination. The British colonial authorities had banned all communist activity, which made the task of building a united party very difficult. Between 1921 and 1924 there were three conspiracy trials against the communist movement. First Peshawar Conspiracy Case, Mirat Conspiracy Case and the Kanpur Bolshevik Conspiracy Case. In the first three cases, Russian-trained Muhajir communists were put on trial. However, the Kanpur trial had more political impact. On 17 March 1924, Shripad Amrit Dang, M.N. Roy, Muzaffar Ahmed, Nalini Gupta, Shakat Usmani, Singaravalu Chedir, Ghulam Hussain and R.C. Sharma were charged, in Kanpur, now spelt Kanpur, Bolshevik conspiracy case. The specific pip charge was that they as communists were seeking, to deprive the King Emperor of his sovereignty of British India, by complete separation of India from Britain by a violent revolution. Pages of newspapers daily splashed sensational communist plans and people for the first time learned, on such a large scale, about communism and its doctrines and the aims of the communist international in India. 11. Singaravalu Chedir was released on account of illness. M. N. Roy was in Germany and R. C. Sharma in French Pondicherry, and therefore could not be arrested. Ghulam Hussain confessed that he had received money from the Russians in Kabul and was pardoned. Muzaffar Ahmed, Nalini Gupta, Shakat Usmani and Dang were sentenced for various terms of imprisonment. This case was responsible for actively introducing communism to a larger Indian audience. 11. Dang was released from prison in 1927. Rahul Dev Pal was a prominent communist leader. On 25 December 1925 a communist conference was organized in Kanpur. 12. Colonial authorities estimated that 500 persons took part in the conference. The conference was convened by a man called Satya Bhakta. At the conference Satya Bhakta argued for a national communism and against subordination under Comintern. Being outvoted by the other delegates, Satyabhakta left the conference venue in protest. The conference adopted the name, Communist Party of India. Groups such as Labour Kizan Party of Hindustan, LKPH, dissolved into the CPI. 13. The Emigre CPI, which probably had little organic character anyway, was effectively substituted by the organization now operating inside India. Soon after the 1926 Conference of the Workers' and Peasants' Party of Bengal, the underground CPI directed its members to join the provincial workers' and peasants' parties. All open communist activities were carried out through workers' and peasants' parties. 14. The Sixth Congress of the Communist International met in 1928. In 1927 the Kuomintang had turned on the Chinese communists which led to a review of the policy on forming alliances with the national bourgeoisie in the colonial countries. The colonial theses of the Sixth Comintern Congress called upon the Indian communists to combat the national reformist leaders and to unmask the national reformism of the Indian National Congress and oppose all phrases of the Swarajists, Gandhists, etc. About passive resistance, 
15. The Congress did however differentiate between the character of the Chinese Kuomintang and the Indian Swarajist Party, considering the latter as neither a reliable ally nor a direct enemy. The Congress called on the Indian Communists to utilize the contradictions between the national bourgeoisie and the British imperialists. 16. The Congress also denounced the WPP. The 10th plenum of the Executive Committee of the Communist International, 3 July 1929 to the 19th of July 1929 directed the Indian Communists to break with WPP. When the Communists deserted it, the WPP fell apart. 17. On 20 March 1929, arrests against WPP, CPI and other labor leaders were made in several parts of India, in what became known as the Meerut Conspiracy Case. The Communist leadership was now put behind bars. The trial proceedings were to last for four years. 18. 19. As of 1934, the main centers of activity of CPI were Bombay, Calcutta and Punjab. The party had also begun extending its activities to Madras. A group of Andhra and Tamil students, amongst them P. Sundaraya, were recruited to the CPI by Amir Haider Khan. 20. The party was reorganized in 1933, after the communist leaders from the Meerut trials were released. A central committee of the party was set up. In 1934 the party was accepted as the Indian section of the Communist International. 2-1. When Indian left-wing elements formed the Congress Socialist Party in 1934, the CPI branded it as social fascist. 15. The League Against Gandhism, initially known as the Gandhi Boycott Committee, was a political organization in Calcutta, founded by the underground Communist Party of India and others to launch militant anti-imperialist activities. The group took the name, League Against Gandhism, in 1934. 22. In connection with the change of policy of the Comintern toward Popular Front politics, the Indian Communists changed their relation to the Indian National Congress. The Communists joined the Congress Socialist Party, which worked as the left wing of Congress. Through joining CSP, the CPI accepted the CSP demand for a constituent assembly, which it had denounced two years before. The CPI however analyzed that the demand for a constituent assembly would not be a substitute for Soviets. 23. In July 1937, clandestine meeting held at Calicut. 24. Five persons were present at the meeting, P. Krishna Pillai, K. Damodaran, E. M. S. Nambudirapad, N. C. Saker and S. V. Gaite. The first four were members of the CSP in Kerala. The CPI in Kerala was formed on 31 December 1939 with the Pinarayi Conference. 25. The latter, Gaite, was a CPI Central Committee member, who had arrived from Madras. 26. Contacts between the CSP in Kerala and the CPI had begun in 1935, when P. Sundaraya, CC member of CPI, based in Madras at the time, met with M. and Krishna Pillai. Sundaraya and Gaite visited Kerala at several times and met with the CSP leaders there. The contacts were facilitated through the national meetings of the Congress, CSP and All India Kizan Sabha. 20. In 1936-1937, the cooperation between socialists and communists reached its peak. At the Second Congress of the CSP, held in Meerut in January 1936, a thesis was adopted which declared that there was a need to build, a united Indian Socialist Party based on Marxism-Leninism, 27, at the 3rd CSP Congress, held in Faizpur, several communists were included into the CSP National Executive Committee, 28. In Kerala communists won control over CSP, and for a brief period controlled Congress there. Two communists, EMS Nambudaripad and Z.A. Ahmed, became all India Joint Secretaries of CSP. The CPI also had two other members inside the CSP executive. 23. On the occasion of the 1940 Ramgar Congress Conference CPI released a declaration called Proletarian Path, which sought to utilize the weakened state of the British Empire in the time of war and gave a call for general strike, no tax, no rent policies and mobilizing for an armed revolutionary uprising. The national executive of the CSP assembled at Ramgar took a decision that all communists were expelled from CSP. 29. In July 1942, the CPI was legalized, as a result of Britain and the Soviet Union becoming allies against Nazi Germany. 30. 
communists strengthened their control over the All India Trade Union Congress. At the same time, communists were politically cornered for their opposition to the Quit India movement. The Communist Party of India opposed the partition of India and did not participate in the Independence Day celebrations of 15 August 1947 in protest of the division of the country. 31. Nojawan Bharat Sabha Nojawan Bharat Sabha, NBS, was founded by revolutionary Bhagat Singh in March 1926. 2. 32. It was a left-wing Marxist association that sought to foment revolution against the British Raj. 33. NBS was radical in its ideas relating to religion, to agrarian reform and movement. The organization was noted for the involvement of its members in killing of John P. Saunders in December 1928. After that NBS organized protest against the Simon Commission in Lahore. The association was banned in July 1929 during a period when the government had imposed Section 144 to control gatherings as public support burgeoned for the imprisoned Singh and his fellow hunger strikers. NBS members were involved in the campaign. 34. NBS activist Sohan Singh Josh was imprisoned for his role in the Meerut conspiracy case. NBS became one of the three significant left-wing groups in Punjab the others being the outlawed Communist Party of India and the Kurdi Kizan Party. These three attempted an alliance and sought also to gather together various smaller left-wing organizations. All associations considered to be left-wing were declared illegal under the Criminal Law Amendment Act, 1908, in September 1934. 35. Notable leaders of NBS include Bhagat Singh, Karam Singh Man, Sohan Singh Josh and others. Kurdi Kizan Partyedit. The Workers' and Peasants' Party or Kurdi Kizan Party was founded in Bengal in 1925, as the Labour Swaraj Party of the Indian National Congress by Qazi Nazrul Islam, Hemanta Kumar Sarkar, Qutubuddin Ahmad and Shamsuddin Hussain. 36, 37, 38, the WPPs had much influence in Bombay, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh and Bengal. The WPP representatives together with Nehru were able to convince the AICC to make the Indian National Congress an associate member of the League Against Imperialism. 38 WPP was successful in mobilizing trade union work. It built unions amongst printing press, municipal and dock workers. It gained influence amongst the workers of the Great Indian Peninsular Railway. During 1928 the WPP led a general strike in Bombay, which lasted for months. At the time of the strike, the Gurney Kamgar Union was founded. 38 During the protests against the Simon Commission, the WPP played a major role in organizing manifestations in Calcutta and Bombay. In Bombay it also mobilized, Hartle, general strike, in protest against the Simon Commission. 38 The party also worked for the abolishment of, Zamandari, system in agriculture. 39. On 20 March 1929, Arrests against WPP, CPI and other labor leaders were made in several parts of India, in what became known as the Meerut Conspiracy Case. Most of the WPP leadership was now put behind bars. The trial proceedings were to last for four years, thus outliving the WPP. Tangdi, the WPP of Bombay president, died whilst the trial was still going on. After the arrests of its main leaders, the WPP was dissolved. 4041. Notable leaders of this party were Nari's Chandra Sen Gupta, Hemanta Kumar Sarkar, Qutubuddin Ahmad, S.S. Mirajkar, Philip Spratt and many others. First demand for Purna Swaraj. Congress leader and famous poet Hazrat Mohani and Communist Party of India leader Swami Kumaranand were the first activists to demand complete independence, Purna Swaraj, from the British in 1921 resolution from an All India Congress forum at the Ahmedabad session of AICC. 42, 43, Mafur Ahmad Ajazi supported the Purna Swaraj motion demanded by Hazrat Mohani. 44. Kakori train robbery. One of the successful efforts of Hindustan Socialist Republican Association, then known as HRA, was Kokori train robbery in Kokori, a village near Lucknow, on 9 August 1925, during the Indian independence movement against the British Raj. The robbery plan was executed by Ram Prasad Bismal, Ashfachula Khan, Rajendra Lahiri, Chandra Sakar Azad, Sachindra Bakshi, Keshav Chakravarti, Manmathnath Gupta, Mukundi Lal, Marari Lal Gupta and Banwari Lal. 4546. 
On 9 August 1925, the No. 8 down train on the Saharanpur railway lines, 47, was travelling from Shah Jahanpur to Lucknow. 48. When it passed Kokori one of the revolutionaries, Rajendra Lahiri, pulled the emergency chain to stop the train and subsequently, the other revolutionaries overpowered the guard. They looted only these bags, which were present in the guard's cabin and contained about 4,600 rupees, which belonged to the Indians and were being transferred to the British government treasury. One passenger was killed unintentionally. Following the incident, the British administration started an intense manhunt and arrested several of the revolutionaries who were members or part of the HRA. Their leader, Ram Prasad Bismil was arrested at Shah Jahanpur on 26 October 1925 and Ashfaqullah Khan was arrested on 7 December 1926 at Delhi. Peshawar Conspiracy Case, 1922–1927 the colonial government feared that the defendants were entering India with the purpose of spreading socialist and communist ideas and supporting the emerging independence movement. 49. Five legal cases which took place between 1922 and 1927 which are known as the Peshawar conspiracy cases. 50. British government cased against 40 to 50 Muhajirs, who had formed the CPI in 1920 in Tashkent of Soviet Union where they gained political and military training at the Communist University of the Toilers of the East in Moscow. The Muhajirs were mainly Khilafatists who intended to go to Turkey to fight the British, but they met M. N. Roy in Tashkent and with him laid the foundation of the First Communist Party of India. They were charged under Section 121A, and accused of fermenting, a proletarian revolution against the British imperialist oppressors to restore freedom to the masses. 1. This became popular and galvanized the imagination of the young population of the Indian subcontinent. 51. Kanpur Bolshevik Conspiracy Case, 1924-1925, on 17 March 1924, S. A. Deng, M. N. Roy, Muzaffar Ahmed, Nalini Bhushan Dasgupta, Shakat Usmani, Singaravelu Chetir, Ghulam Hussain, Rafiq Ahmad and Shakat Usmani and others were charged that they as communists were seeking to deprive the King Emperor of his sovereignty of British India, by complete separation of India from imperialistic Britain by a violent revolution, in what was called the Kanpur, now spelt Kanpur, Bolshevik conspiracy case, which was initiated in 1924. The case attracted interest of the people towards Comintern plan to bring about violent revolution in India. Pages of newspapers daily splashed sensational communist plans and people for the first time learned such a large scale about communism and its doctrines and the aims of the Communist International in India. 52. This case was responsible for actively introducing communism to the Indian masses. 52. After Kanpur, Britain had triumphantly declared that the case had finished off the communists. 53. But the industrial town of Kanpur, in December 1925, witnessed a conference of different communist groups, under the chairmanship of Singaravelu Chetir, Deng, Muzaffar Ahmed, Nalini Gupta, Shakat Usmani were among the key organizers of the meeting. The meeting adopted a resolution for the formation of the Communist Party of India with its headquarters in Bombay. Lahore Conspiracy Case. Influenced by Auguste Valent, a French anarchist who had bombed the Chamber of Deputies in Paris, 54. Bhagat Singh made a plan to explode a bomb inside the Central Legislative Assembly. On 8 April 1929, Singh, accompanied by Batukeshwar Dutt, threw two bombs into the assembly chamber from its public gallery while it was in session. 55. The bombs had been designed not to kill, 56. But some members, including George Ernest Schuster, the finance member of the Viceroy's Executive Council, were injured. 57. The smoke from the bombs filled the assembly so that Singh and Dutt could probably have escaped in the confusion had they wished. Instead, they stayed shouting the slogan, Inquilab Zindabad. Long live the revolution, and through leaflets. The two men were arrested and subsequently moved through a series of jails in Delhi. 58. Trials began in the first week of June, following a preliminary hearing in May. On 12 June, both men were sentenced to life imprisonment for causing explosions of a nature likely to endanger life, unlawfully and maliciously. 58-59, Dutt had been defended by Asaf Ali, while Singh defended himself. 60, on 15 April 1929, the Lahore bomb factories in Lahore and Saharanpur were discovered by the police, 
leading to the arrest of other members of HSRA, including Sukhdev, Kishori Lal, Jay Gopal, Rajguru, and 21 others. 61. Singh was re-arrested for murdering Saunders and Chanan Singh based on substantial evidence against him, including statements by his associates, Hans Raj Bora and Jay Gopal. 62. His life sentence in the assembly bomb case was deferred until the Saunders case was decided. 63. He was sent to central jail Mianwali from the Delhi jail. 60. There he witnessed discrimination between European and Indian prisoners. They demanded equality in food standards, clothing, toiletries, and other hygienic necessities, as well as access to books and a daily newspaper. They argued that they should not be forced to do manual labor or any undignified work in the jail and started hunger strike. 64 56 The hunger strike inspired a rise in public support for Singh and his colleagues from around June 1929. The Tribune newspaper was particularly prominent in this movement and reported on mass meetings in places such as Lahore and Amritsar. The government had to apply Section 144 of the Criminal Code in an attempt to limit gatherings. 56 Jawaharlal Nehru and Muhammad Ali Jinnah both talked in favor of central jail Mianwali. 65 66 Since the activities of the hunger strikers had gained popularity and attention amongst the people nationwide, the government decided to advance the start of the Saunders murder trial, which was henceforth called the Lahore Conspiracy Case. Singh was transported to Borstal Jail, Lahore, 67, and the trial began there on 10 July 1929. In addition to charging them with the murder of Saunders, Singh and the 27 other prisoners were charged with plotting a conspiracy to murder Scott, and waging a war against the king. 62. Singh, still on hunger strike, had to be carried to the court handcuffed on a stretcher. He had lost 14 pounds, 6.4 kilograms, from his original weight of 133 pounds, 60 kilograms, since beginning the strike. 67. Hunger strike poster of Bhagat Singh and Batukesh Dutt. Daily Mylap poster of the Lahore Conspiracy Case 1930. Death sentence of Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev and Rajguru. A Crown Prosecution Team was created comprising C. H. Cardin Noad, Kalandar Ali Khan, J. Gopal Lal, and the Prosecuting Inspector, Bakshi Dina Nath. 62. The defense was composed of eight lawyers. Prem Dutt Burma, the youngest amongst the 27 accused, threw his slipper at Gopal when he turned and became a prosecution witness in court. As a result, the magistrate ordered that all the accused should be handcuffed. 62. Singh and others refused to be handcuffed and were subjected to brutal beating. 68. The revolutionaries refused to attend the court and Singh wrote a letter to the magistrate citing various reasons for their refusal. 69. 70. The magistrate ordered the trial to proceed without the accused or members of the HSRA. This was a setback for Singh as he could no longer use the trial as a forum to publicize his views. 71. To speed up the slow trial, the Viceroy, Lord Irwin, declared an emergency on 1 May 1930 and introduced an ordinance to set up a special tribunal composed of three high court judges for the case. This decision cut short the normal process of justice as the only appeal after the tribunal was to the Privy Council located in England. 62. On 2 July 1930, a habeas corpus petition was filed in the High Court challenging the ordinance on the grounds that it was ultra vires and, therefore, illegal. The Viceroy had no powers to shorten the customary process of determining justice. 62. The petition argued that the Defense of India Act 1915 allowed the Viceroy to introduce an ordinance, and set up such a tribunal, only under conditions of a breakdown of law and order, which, it was claimed in this case, had not occurred. However, the petition was dismissed as being premature. 72. Cardin Noad presented the government's charges of conducting robberies, and the illegal acquisition of arms and ammunition among others. 62. The evidence of G.T.H. Hamilton Harding, the Lahore superintendent of police, shocked the court. He stated that he had filed the first information report against the accused under specific orders from the chief secretary to the governor of Punjab and that he was unaware of the details of the case. The prosecution depended mainly on the evidence of P. N. Ghosh, Hans Raj Vora, and J. Gopal who had been Singh's associates in the HSRA. On 10 July 1930, the tribunal decided to press charges against only 15 of the 18 accused and allowed their petitions to be taken up for hearing the next day. 
The trial ended on 30 September 1930. 62. The three accused, whose charges were withdrawn, included Dutt who had already been given a life sentence in the assembly bomb case. 73. The ordinance, and the tribunal, would lapse on 31 October 1930 as it had not been passed by the Central Assembly or the British Parliament. On 7 October 1930, the tribunal delivered its 300-page judgment based on all the evidence and concluded that the participation of Singh, Sukhdev, and Rajguru in Saunders' murder was proven. They were sentenced to death by hanging. 62. Of the other accused, three were acquitted, Ajoy Ghosh, Jatindra Nath Sanyal and De Raj, Kundan Lal received seven years rigorous imprisonment, Prem Dutt received five years of the same, and the remaining seven, Kishori Lal, Mahabir Singh, Bajoy Kumar Sinha, Shiv Verma, Gaya Prasad, J. Dev and Kamalnath Tiwari, were all sentenced to transportation for life. 74. In Punjab province, a defense committee drew up a plan to appeal to the Privy Council. Singh was initially against the appeal but later agreed to it in the hope that the appeal would popularize the HSRA in Britain. The appellants claimed that the ordinance which created the tribunal was invalid while the government countered that the viceroy was completely empowered to create such a tribunal. The appeal was dismissed by Judge Viscount Dunedin. 75. After the rejection of the appeal to the Privy Council, Congress Party President Maiden Mohan Malviya filed a mercy appeal before Irwin on 14 February 1931. 76. Some prisoners sent Mahatma Gandhi an appeal to intervene. 62. In his notes dated 19 March 1931, the Viceroy recorded, While returning Gandhiji asked me if he could talk about the case of Bhagat Singh because newspapers had come out with the news of his slated hanging on March 24. It would be a very unfortunate day because on that day the new president of the Congress had to reach Karachi and there would be a lot of hot discussion. I explained to him that I had given a very careful thought to it but I did not find any basis to convince myself to commute the sentence. It appeared he found my reasoning weighty. 77. The Communist Party of Great Britain expressed its reaction to the case. The history of this case, of which we do not come across any example in relation to the political cases, reflects the symptoms of callousness and cruelty which is the outcome of bloated desire of the imperialist government of Britain so that fear can be instilled in the hearts of the repressed people. 76. A plan to rescue Singh and fellow HSRA inmates from the jail failed. HSRA member Durga Devi's husband, Bhagwati Sharan Vora, attempted to manufacture bombs for the purpose, but died when they exploded accidentally. 78. Meerut Conspiracy Case, 1929-1933. The British government was clearly worried. First demand for Purna Swaraj. Congress leader and famous poet Hazrat Mohani and Communist Party of India leader Swami Kumaranand were the first activists to demand complete independence, Purna Swaraj, from the British in 1921 resolution from an All India Congress Forum at the Ahmedabad session of AICC. 42-43, Mathur Ahmad Ajazi supported the Purna Swaraj motion demanded by Hazrat Mohani. 44. Kokori Train Robbery One of the successful efforts of Hindustan Socialist Republican Association, then known as HRA, was Kokori Train Robbery in Kokori, a village near Lucknow, on 9 August 1925, during the Indian independence movement against the British Raj. The robbery plan was executed by Ram Prasad Bismal. Ashfachula Khan, Rajendra Lahiri, Chandra Sakar Azad, Sachindra Bakshi, Keshav Chakravarti, Manmathnath Gupta, Mukandi Lal, Marari Lal Gupta and Banwari Lal. 4546. On 9 August 1925, the number 8 down train on the Saharanpur railway lines, 47, was traveling from Shah Jahanpur to Lucknow. 48. When it passed Kakori one of the revolutionaries, Rajendra Lahiri, pulled the emergency chain to stop the train and subsequently, the other revolutionaries overpowered the guard. They looted only these bags, which were present in the guard's cabin and contained about 4,600 rupees, which belonged to the Indians and were being transferred to the British government treasury. One passenger was killed unintentionally. Following the incident, the British administration started an intense manhunt and arrested several of the revolutionaries who were members or part of the HRA. Their leader, 
Ram Prasad Bismil was arrested at Shah Jahanpur on 26 October 1925 and Ashfaqala Khan was arrested on 7 December 1926 at Delhi. Peshawar Conspiracy Case, 1922–1927. The colonial government feared that the defendants were entering India with the purpose of spreading socialist and communist ideas and supporting the emerging independence movement. 49. Five legal cases which took place between 1922 and 1927 which are known as the Peshawar Conspiracy Cases. 50. British government cased against 40 to 50 Muhajirs, who had formed the CPI in 1920 in Tashkent of Soviet Union where they gained political and military training at the Communist University of the Toilers of the East in Moscow. The Muhajirs were mainly Khilafatis who intended to go to Turkey to fight the British, but they met M. N. Roy in Tashkent and with him laid the foundation of the First Communist Party of India. They were charged under Section 121A, and accused of fermenting, a proletarian revolution against the British imperialist oppressors to restore freedom to the masses. 1. This became popular and galvanized the 